So here, what we have is um, she's been placed in this virtual environment. It's an optical store, and uh, all she all she will have to do here is just um, uh, select between a drone and a hummingbird. This is actually a view of what she sees. She sees it in three dimensions, so this is something like very immer immersive experience. And what you can do now is that if you prefer the drone or the hummingbird, you just have to move your head until, until the blue circle just falls on the on the stimulus you prefer. So just click on the drone. Perfect. So she's selecting the drone now. So the only purpose of this is just that she can uh, become more relaxed because she she has chosen the right stimulus to follow during the day. Now she's she's as a part of the experience, she's placed into an elevator and taken to the top of the building. As you can see, you can also turn your head here, just feel comfortable with the environment. Now there is no limitation here, exactly. And now, when she reaches the top, exactly again, just look around. Now you see this is the environment, this is this nice terror. Okay. And in this place, exactly, you can now point to the start button. And the first thing you'll be asked here is to reset the position of your neck because we want to be, we want to have you in the neutral position. So the first thing is look up and then look down and then now look to the infinite. That's the reference position. And on that spot, you, you hold it there, you stay there, don't move. Perfect. That's the spot where the stimulus will appear. And the only thing she has to do now is just follow the drone as it flies around. You can see here it will happen in two, one. Okay, it's, it's done. And now you have to follow this drone as naturally as possible. You have to be relaxed. So if you prefer to move your head, do so. If you prefer to move your eyes, do so. Whatever you do has to be natural. And it's going to be right. There is no wrong or right behavior. It has to be your behavior. Because remember, as I said before, we need to measure her. We need to measure the way she gazes, the way she gazes, so that uh, then we will be able to design a progressive lens specifically designed for her. Now, the first, pa the first part of this test is just placing the drone on the far area. This is, this is a very large plane. It takes a while. But you see the drone is just flying around, nothing else. But while, she, while the drone is flying, we, we're measuring her. We're measuring how she moves the head and how she moves the eyes so we can understand what are their preferences. It takes a while, maybe this one, this one, um, this plane is slightly longer for, for measurement because it's a very large plane, it's far and it's very large, it has to cover the, the whole area. But then you see how once everything's covered, the drone will move towards an intermediate plane. That's the second part we need to measure because intermediate distance is very important for progressive measure. We also need to measure that distance. And that's where it is right now. So the drone now is flying on uh, the intermediate plane and again just doing similar pattern of movements trying to cover the whole area. Perfect. And then once done, the drone is going to, to, to be moving towards the near plane. And again, another important plane, near area, very important for progressive lenses. So progressive lenses try to allow you or will allow you to focus at far, intermediate and near distances very naturally. So we need to know how you gaze uh, objects at all those three distances. That's where the drone is now, near distance. And now the outcome that we will see actually is the frequency maps that we're getting from here. So we'll be able to understand what is the frequency of use of each part of the lens while doing the test. And this is what is going, what is going to be shown here. Now the, calculate, the calculations are being made. And now she's placed back into the optical store. And this is the outcome. You can see here we've been measuring far intermediate to near distances and also the frequency map. Red for highest frequency, blue for lowest frequency. So with this we are able to see that for the near area 
she's been looking with a, like a spread frequency or highest frequency all over the places while for intermediate it's very focused on one spot so this is very relevant for the optical feature so we need to know that before we optimize an optical design for her or progressive optical design for her so as i said at the beginning this is the test and then there is the outcome so we we before setting up this experiment here, what we did is that a set of experiments with people um, trying to understand what was the relationship between these maps and their preferences in terms of progressive lens. So thanks to this device, we've been able to link, to establish the link between gaze dynamics and the progressive lens or the optical features of the progressive lens with the most comfortable features that one person needs. Thank you.